Hey, hey, Tony guys is here. You know, I want you to think about something. I want you to realize if you ever wondered, if you ever wondered if God is real, if you ever wondered if Christianity is real, I want you to know that the fact that so many people are so dead set on blaspheming God, that in itself should be enough evidence that it's real. Because who fights imaginary things? Who blasphemes something that doesn't exist? I was just looking at this guy online and he was, it was a post about this guy talking about Tory Lanez wanting to buy his brand or collaborate. And he was talking about how he dodged a bullet and he showed you know, Tory Lanez with a hat on, like a baseball cap on backwards. And he got two little horns, two little devil horns. And I clicked on the guy page and he made these hats with devil horns on it, with horns on it. And he said, on the side of the hat, it, it looked like it say, it ain't sinning if you winning. It looked like what it said. I don't know if the W word that looked like W-I-N-N -N was turning into something else, but it said it ain't sinning if you winning. And it said so much to me because that's what a lot of people think. A lot of people don't know the difference between a blessing and a snare. So a blessing is a gift that brings no sorrow. God gives gifts and adds no sorrow. A snare, it looks like a blessing, but there's a hook in it. So what the devil gives is essentially what we give a fish when we fishing. That's what the devil gives us. When that fish first see that worm or that shrimp or that small fish wiggling in the water, it thinks it's going to get a blessing. It thinks it's finna get them a meal, get a stomach full but then when it goes and it bites that seeming blessing it then has a hook through its gills or through its eye somewhere and it's pulled up and if it's in season it's taken off the hook and it's put in a cooler and it's taken home and it meets its demise that's what the devil do he throws something out there and he, he give you a life and it, and it look like it's a blessing but you don't see the snare you don't see the hook and then when you are in season the devil gonna when he hook you he gonna kill you and I see so much battle between the spirits. Somebody posted on TikTok about Jay-Z doing a movie with the guy who played in Get Out, who was like the main character in Get Out. And now he's supposed to be in this movie that they say is like mocking the life of Jesus. I can't remember if it's called Charles or Charleston or something, but it's a black guy. And, and the guy on TikTok says mocking the life of Jesus. I don't know. I haven't seen it. And I didn't know if Jay-Z was the producer of it but even with Jay-Z being as big as he is he has an obsession with competing against God and that's why he calls himself Hove short for Jehovah and so when you go to his concert and you're yelling Hova, 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 Hova in his mind you yelling God, God, God and when you look at his lyrics, he has so much blasphemy to where he may mention God sometimes in a godly way, but majority of the time it's like denouncing God or competing with God or, or comparing himself to God or minimizing God. And in the song he did with Alicia Keys, um, the New York song where she keep, she hollering, New York. If you go read the lyrics of that song, you'll see in there what Jay-Z says that life starts when the church ends. And he's saying that 
and it said, Hail Mary, something, Jesus can't save you, or something like that. And then even in that very satanic song where they have a lot of demonic symmetry, I mean symbols, run this town back in the day with Kanye, Rihanna, and Jay-Z. And then mind you, all three of them, we run this town. Kanye, Jay-Z, and Rihanna, all three of them are billionaires. What are the odds that three black people, one from an island, which we know the struggle in the islands, we know how the economy could be, it's, it's very unlikely to come from an island and become a billionaire. But what are the odds of these three individuals making music that mocks God, that blasphemes God, and then because Jay-Z calls himself Hove, which is short for Hova, which is short for Jehovah, then Kanye says, okay, well, if you are God, I'm gonna call myself Jesus. So he calls himself Jesus, which is a play on Jesus, and then Rihanna, she takes and she joins forces and they all become billionaires. And then like Jay-Z said in, uh, what's his name? DJ Khaled's album. DJ Khaled did a song called God Did. And I think DJ Khaled may actually be being sincere but when you listen to Jay-Z's line on there, he keeps saying, Hove did. Basically, where other people, they went ahead and just said, God did. He keeps saying, Hove did, which he comparing himself. And then he makes a comparison, you know, Jesus turned water into wine. And then he says something like, all Hove needed was a stove or something like that. And so he make a comparison between Jesus and himself. And then he keeps saying, Hove did. And then we see his wife, Beyonce, who has been documented for her videos having satanic symbolism and her concerts being a sort of worship experience where the crowd is pretty much worshiping her. You know, the crowd is in tears and, you know, just really in awe. Then we have to ask ourselves, like, okay, do these women who go to Beyonce concert and cry, do they cry like that when they are singing praise and worship? Do they cry like that when they go to church? Or do they go to church? And if they go to church, do they do you literally cry and hold your heart and pant and lose your breath when you go to church and you sing worship music? And when you leave church, do you go online and post pictures and testimonials of how great church was? The way people do when they go to a Beyonce concert and then everybody leaves and literally becomes a disciple of Beyonce. Like people go watch someone who God gave a gift to sing songs that do not glorify God and then they leave there and every celebrity post about Beyonce as if they are in a trance and it's not like it's like yes she's talented but it's talent like you're talented and if you sang from the age of three you would be able to sing just as well if you dance from the age of three, you would be able to dance just as well. But that's just not what you did. But yet, humans will take and pedestalize and worship and idolize humans. And that's why I tell people all the time and people think that I'm playing when I'm always like, you know, don't praise me. Like, don't praise me. Don't. And people still do it. But the reason why I'm careful about that is because I never want to be an idol. I never want to stand between somebody in God. I never want a God complex. I never want to be in competition with God. I never want to be somebody's God. Like if somebody listens to my message and their life has changed, I want them to say, God used Tony. 
But so often people say, Tony, you changed my life. And I want to say to that, I didn't change your life. God changed my life and God used me to impact your life. And you and God changed your life. God changed your life. I just was a vessel to get a message to you. So I want you to understand, like, to see this spiritual warfare and to see what people are trying to do. And I know somebody going to be in the comments, oh, I can't hear. You need to talk louder. I'm in a hotel. The walls are paper thin. I know even right now the person next to me probably could hear my voice carrying because, you know, my voice deep. And so it probably carrying through the walls. But I want you to understand that just even seeing these humans try to compete with God ought to be evidence enough that God exists. Like that ought to be enough evidence that they know God is real. They know God is real. And they've had confrontations. And they've had visitations from Satan. And then I seen Lil Uzi Vert. You know, what, what they posted a Lil Uzi Vert where he has this concert and he basically telling everybody that they're going to hell with him or something like that and basically letting them know that they're under a spell or, you know, in satanic worship and going to hell with him. And he said, you know, y'all are here. Y'all are in it. Can you not tell? And now you stuck. And like, look at his face tattoos. Look at the piercings where he's trying to resemble something demonic. The the, the diamond he put in his forehead. It's like these individuals in, in this secular music industry, they're going so far to oppose God like they are trying to literally fight against God up in God and it's hard because our teenagers want to listen to this stuff and then we will be seen as the worst parent in the world if we say you know take that secular music out your phone and it's not everybody that is you know selling their soul because Not everybody is big enough. Not everybody has enough power, enough money, enough of a following. But when you get to that iconic level to where you become an idol, then you have the power through you to warp people spiritually and to take people away from God. And God allows it because he, God gives us free will. We have free will like you could pick and choose if you want to live righteous or if you want to live in sin. And even the even people who aren't trying to oppose God, there's a, a spiritual warfare. Like, think of all of the album titles, rap album titles, and rap imagery on an album cover that you've seen that is spiritual. I feel like even, I feel like J. Cole had something like a born sinner or something like that. I remember even Plies had the real testament. And I think it was his face or his head coming out of like a book that was open. The book looked like the Bible. And it was basically, you know, you got the Old Testament, the New Testament. And he did an album called The Real Testament. And it's like, why even the reference? Remember Meek Mill did a song called Amen. And it had a church beat you know the church music there was there used to be a song in church that was rain down on me la, 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 on me and i feel like tory lanes did a song using that chorus and made it a secular song and and then here comes kanye which you obviously can see now that he's not worshiping god he's not worshiping christ because of just all of the chaos he went through with his wife and just all of the antics and just all of the, the craziness. Like, that's not the peace of Christ. Like, you, you're you not acting like that when you when you really rocking with Christ. And so here comes this guy who calls himself Jesus. Direct and blatant blasphemy. And then he comes and he plays on the church. He plays on the church. He uses the name of God. He gets all these people 
to sing these gospel songs and he takes secular music and turns it into gospel. So now you have God emulating, you have the music of God that is emulating the music of Satan. And then Christians are bopping and dancing and clapping to it as if God would ever follow Satan, as if God needs Satan as a leader, as an example, as somebody he needs to spin off of. And then when you address it, oh, you being too deep or, oh, you being too religious or, oh, you taking it too serious. And people don't understand the seriousness of spiritual warfare. And that is why spiritual warfare is why Michael Jackson turned himself white and then end up dying. Spiritual warfare is why Whitney Houston is dead. Spiritual warfare is why Prince is dead. It's why Marvin Gaye is dead. It's why Tupac was killed, why Biggie was killed, why Nipsey Hussle was killed. Like, all of this is spiritual warfare. It's all people who are warring in the spirit. It's why Martin Luther King was killed. It's why Malcolm X was killed. It's why a lot of us who have a voice get to a place to where, like me, I really don't even want to tour anymore just out of safety. Just because you never know how mad the devil is going to get. And and it ain't even about this huge movement. It's literally about the devil being able to see what you're going to upend. What you're going to do. And having somebody get angry with you over something minuscule. And possessing that person to take your life. Before Martin Luther King was killed, he was he was stabbed by a woman, a black woman. Bob Marley, like Bob Marley died before he reached his pinnacle. And what would his movement and his voice had done to unify people, to almost single handedly dismantle politics and crooked politicians around the world through his music and he wasn't saying God but see the, the devil is not just only against Jesus Christ the devil is against progression purity unity because all of those things can eventually lead to Christ or even just that that head space and being in that place you don't have to worship Selassie. You may choose Jesus Christ, but you could have been led to that place of religion or the thought of a higher power just from the unity and the love that you felt from Bob Marley music. And God could have, you know, stepped in and converted somebody or had somebody want a soul. And so I want you to really think about this, really look around and pay attention to how the untimely demise of people who were trying to bring about change. It, and it's really also, you see it on a, on a smaller scale in like, in gang culture. So when you think about gang culture, it's like somebody joins a gang and then if they want to leave the gang, like they get killed. Or you got to get jumped out or, or, or it's like, you know, it's blood in, blood out. And so the same thing happens. It's like Malcolm X was on this one wave. And then when that when he changed and he switched, he switched sides, they, they killed him. Nipsey Hussle was said to be or almost seemed like a self-professed, you know, killer. And then when he seen the light. And he started, you know, embodying his name, um, Hermes or Hermes or how you say it, which means God will rise. And he started becoming enlightened and he started saying, he started saying, put down the guns and let's stop this red and blue and let's stop this, let's stop this gang bang. Like we killing our own people. Like we, we, we running down on somebody who looked just like us. Like what sense does this make? So the whole time he was always an undercover agent for good, meaning he was a good kid, music school, you know, doing the right thing in school, and then got sucked into the street life for protection or like 
you got to do it because you're walking past these games. You're walking home past these games. And if you don't join, you're not going to be respected. You're not going to be protected. So for whatever reason, he felt forced to join. And then when he started pushing a positive message and he started to unify, bring people together, you know, and, and you know, he rapping about about to meet with the city council and about to meet with these different people. The next thing you know, boom, the devil get him snuffed out. His life is his life is taken. And so I'm very sensitive to that stuff. And that's because I know that I'm a, a servant of God and I, I don't play around with that stuff. And, you know, I, I know I'm a servant of God and I know that, you know, I, my message can set captives free because it's God's message and it set me free. And that's why I don't worry about connecting and collaborating and all that because God got me. You know, God got me and my focus is not money. Like God, sometimes God will just touch somebody's heart to send me a blessing. And I, I be in a struggle because my, my message is not that popular. So it's not like I'm like swimming in cash. I'm blessed. But I still struggle. You know, I still have to pay bills. I still have to do that. But I have to trust that God got me. You know, I trust God got me. And I see what's going on out here. And because of the, the devil being so loud and him using so many people, you know, I got to speak up more every time I feel it. Every time I see something, I got to speak up more just to help more people become aware. Like become aware of the spiritual warfare and of what the devil is doing. And it's getting serious and it's getting intense. And I even seen it with like uh, the, the, the Christian rapper Lecrae here recently doing like Righteous and Ratchet and, and that being a hindrance to his brethren, which... He could mean whatever he means by it, but if it's tripping up babies in the Lord, if it's confusing babies in the Lord, then you're not doing the work of God. Because as Christians, we cannot give a baby in the Lord steak. A baby in the Lord got to have milk. And then after that milk, then they get to, you know, some, some mushed up food. Then they'll get to soft, solid food. Then they could get to, you know, food that got to be chewed for real. And the Bible say don't be a hindrance to your brethren. But here come Lecrae. He want to be cool and he want to be accepted. And then there's so many Christians who want to be cool. They want to be accepted. So I could not speak on Lecrae with the hopes that he'll follow me on Instagram. But he don't follow me on Instagram, even though he probably has seen me on Instagram but he, he, if he's seen me and he don't follow me, it's because even though we supposed to be on the same team, he may secretly feel like he's on another team, like he, like he a Decepticon. And when people start are, are so in tune with the hermeneutics and the, the theology and they're so wordy and they got all these words, a lot of times that's when the devil will, will play you. That's when the devil will come in and make you conceited in your wisdom. And he will play. And, and you get to the point. What happens is people get to the point where they start to think that they outthinking God. They start to think they're too enlightened to believe in God. They start to think that you got to be a dummy. You got to be a fool. You got to be a sheep to believe in God just because of the analogy that Christ used, the parables of, of the sheep. People will take that as, you know, oh, you're weak. And not understanding that, you know, sheep have a shepherd. And that shepherd protects the sheep from the wolves. But people start to say, oh, you know, they, they'll take it too literal. And just get hooked in their own deceit. And so we're in this space to where it's coming a time to where I don't really speak names, but we come in a time to where names gonna have to be called. Names gonna have to be called to where if people are picking up the devil's sword and they trying to fight the devil battles, you got to be called out by name. And what God is saying to his soldiers is, do you want to be cool and accepted or do you want to be pleasing in the sight of God? 
and what we doing, it ain't it can't be it's not in spite. It's not in hate. It's not even about confrontation. It's just about drawing a line in the sand and just standing on business, standing for, for what God stands for and walking boldly in that. And a line gonna have to be drawn and, and, and we're gonna have to trust God, Lord. Like Lord, hey, the world may cancel us. So, Lord, we need you more than ever to be there for us, you know, and, and to bless us and make sure that we have what we need. And because it's about to come that time to where there's about to be a line drawn in the sand. And there's a lot of separation that's going to happen. And those who are sold out for money, those, those who are sold out for money and fame and clout, and they want to be connected, they want to be friends and in with the world it's going to have to be a separation it's going to have to be a separation that's why the Bible say you know come out from among them like God is not with joining forces it's one thing to minister to it's one thing to be accessible for the sake of ministry but it's another thing to join forces and lock arms with those who have clearly chosen the devil's side. And so this thing getting real. This thing getting real and it's time that we put our spiritual lenses on and we start to look at the world through spiritual lenses instead of through carnal lenses. We look at the world through godly lenses and so that we're able to put a hedge of protection from God around ourselves and around our family and we guard our eyes and we guard our ears and that we're very mindful of what the devil trying to do because a lot of so-called Christians are being bought. They're being bought with a price, but not the price that Jesus paid. They're being bought with literal dollars. And I want you to think about that. Like, Jesus paid a price of blood on the cross. Something that's priceless, something that you can't put a dollar amount on. And yet, because the dollar is currency in our world and it buys houses and cars, people are selling their morals, their values, their Christian beliefs, selling their soul to make more money. But money cannot be taken with you. Money cannot buy you a ticket into eternal life with God. Like, Money can't do nothing for you but serve you on this temporary stop on earth. And as we know through Christ, we are spirit. We made in his image. And we passing through. That's why the Bible said, don't store up your treasures here where things can rust and moth and tarnish but store up in heaven where it's eternity and we struggling we struggling we struggling and we, we, we really we losing we losing in a lot of ways and so you know you gotta be mindful you gotta be mindful and you know just be able to Really discern, pray for discernment, pray for wisdom, knowledge, understanding, discernment, discretion, power, strength, faith, courage, boldness, and be humbly bold in the Lord. Don't be arrogant in the Lord. Don't be conceited in the Lord. You, it don't go together. You can't be that and be of God. You don't have to be a segregationist and standoffish, but you got to call a spade a spade. You got to speak on what we got to be speak on. We got to hold each other accountable. You got to hold each other accountable. So, hey, you know, I, I seen, and, and like with Lecrae, he was talking about, I could quote Cardi and Corinthians, but it's really probably because he's at a space in his life to where it would be a dream for him to be featured on a Cardi B track. Like he probably would do it in a heartbeat. And so using his platform to really placate 
to the devil's music so that he could get picked. It's really like pick Misha behavior. And it's sad when Christians want to be accepted by the world. Instead of wanting to be a peculiar people, a people that are set apart and uniquely divinely designed to where people want to look within and say, where's that joy from? Where's that peace from? Where's that peace that passes all understanding? How can I get that? Not where's that judgment from? You know, where's that standoffishness from? Because we still should show love. You know, you show love by being kind, but you don't show love by emulating or by getting in bed with or joining forces with. That's not how you win somebody. And I remember on a very small, simple scale where I was working with an NBA team as the team life coach and the star player came up to me and he was like, man, why do you have a gold necklace? Why do you have a Rolex? Why do you have Balmain jeans? You know, what is this? And it was like, what he was saying is, he was saying, you're dressing like me, but you're supposed to be mature and I want to look up to you. I want to grow to the level you're on, but if you're on the level I'm on, you're leaving me no room to grow, nothing to aspire to. So don't try to be like me. Don't dumb yourself down and try to be like me. Like, be different. Be peculiar. Be better than me so I can grow to where you're at. And we had another guy on the team who used to always, you know, he would talk about God and he was, you know, he was a fake Christian. And the other guy, the star player, he came to me, both of them were star players, but he came to me and he was like, man, just like such and such, man, he always, you know, want to talk about God and pretend to be like a Christian, but then he listened to Young Thug. You can't be no Christian and listen to Young Thug. So here this guy was who he loved Young Thug. He, the, the, the other guy who wasn't claiming to be a Christian or a good guy, he was always in the strip club. You know, he loved the rap music. They know every word to the rap music, which I never understood. I'm like, y'all would be scholars if you learn your schoolwork the way y'all know this rap. And, but it upset him that this so-called Christian was listening to Young Thug. And that is what the Bible talks about, about not being a hindrance to your brethren. Like this man who was living a secular lifestyle wanted to see righteousness from self-proclaimed Christians. He wanted to see a difference so that when he is ready to change, he has something to emulate, something to aspire to. But what he was saying is, what is the point of me changing if so-called Christians are emulating me? If you dress just like me, if you listen to the music I listen to, then how can you be renewed? How can you be different? So essentially, like, let's say if we put it in, in women's terms, and, and guess what? He was right. Like, yeah, it don't mean a Christian got to wear khakis, <laughs> but I was trying to look like and emulate the world, like literally. And it wasn't just like me. It, it literally, it also came from my wife being into fashion. And, but guess what? The other people in the front office, which is what I was considered to be in the front office, they wore suits. And the players respected them more because they wore suits or they wore khakis with polos. And those people would look look down at me because I have on camo print pants you know with a blazer with, with a t-shirt and a blazer and I'm like mm, what you got on and so just something as simple as that which we get mad about it you know we get mad about it but now I've learned you know let me dress the part let me dress how I want to be addressed so if the superiors don't dress like the players, 
If the ad men don't dress like the players, then I'm not going to dress like the players. If the ad men, the front office, dress like the players, then I'll dress like the, like the front office. If that's what the players see and see as normal and respect. And that has nothing to do with, you know, religion or Christ, but it was a thing. And it just was a small example of how people who are not where they want to be, they want to see examples that they can aspire to. So if they look at Christians and Christians are bickering and fighting and mocking and imitating the world and living in sin, they can be like, whoa, what's going on? What's going on? what y'all supposed to be doing this this the power of god it's the power you want me to believe in so hey this tony gaskin just popping in wanting to share this god bless y'all um right now it's 90 percent off on the courses the coupon code is rest r-e-s-t but i'm thinking i'm i am have to change that by by thursday to open back up for the atlanta event that is on the 12th the meetup in atlanta it's on the 12th you'll see it it's closed right now you can't sign up but be ready friday thursday or friday and then saturday night this saturday night we got a call it's a conference a virtual conference we're going in we're going in spots are only 25 dollars it's called a fourth quarter conference. You'll see that on TonyGasselAcademy.com as well. So make sure you get there. Get that in your spirit when it opens back up Thursday. Or if you see this on Thursday, September 7th, then you'll know. But hey, this Tony Gasselin. God bless you. We'll talk soon.